All right, it's time for another math. Easy solution. Let's discuss some more derivative rules. Look at the proof of the chain rule. This is extremely important um, derivative rule and used throughout all of calculus and whatnot. And I'll show you what it means. I'll start off by let's writing fx equals a random equation, say x squared plus 1, power of 100. Well, and we want to, let's say we want to know the, der the, the derivative in terms of x, f prime of x equals, well, we don't know what it is because my other rules didn't really uh, touch on how to get this function because the problem here is it's a function within a function. Yeah, and what I mean by that is this could be written as basically f of u where u is equal to yeah, it's f of u equals u to the power of 100 where u is basically is u is equal to x squared plus 1. So in here we, we change the, the variables so that f is a function of u and u is a function of x. And uh, yeah, so basically this is a function of each other. So what I mean, so we know that, uh, but we know the derivatives, yeah, so this is a function of a function or within, so we could write of. So, but we know the derivative of f prime of u is equal to just 100 times u99 using our power rule. You can just look at my other video. And the derivative of this one in terms of x is equal to uh, 2x. Just power rule again, and addition rule, this is derivative of 0. Now what we want to do is we what we want yes yeah, so we want to do is derive an expression for what the derivative in terms of x but in terms of f prime of u and u prime because well we know these already or we know how to get them so that's that's in, the, in terms of this so before we get the proof let's say before yeah so before we uh, derive this we need to do some a uh, little bit extra so for this proof that I saw in my calculus book. Well, we got to start off, let's say you have function y equals is function of x. And basically, x is incremented from x to x plus delta x. So that the delta y, yeah, so delta y is equal to, yeah, so delta y is equal to f of x plus delta x minus f of x. So basically, the new value minus the subtract by initial, that's the delta x. So if we have, um, let's say what's it called so we know that the de de derivative this is y prime this one's just going to be equal to well or f prime of x is equal to limit as delta x goes to zero of delta y over delta x it's just definition derivative in a in a Leibniz notation or whatnot so now what we got to do is define before we get the proof we define Epsilon, I call it. This is epsilon or e or whatnot, it's a Greek symbol, and it's gonna. We're gonna define it as the difference of delta y over delta x minus basically f prime of x, or the slope. The reason I'm de deriving this way because the, then when we have the limit of delta x goes to zero of epsilon, this is just gonna be equal to limit delta y over delta x. Delta x goes to zero. And this is minus f prime of x. This doesn't have a limit there because this doesn't get affected by delta x. This is just in terms of x. And this one right here, this is just f prime of x. That's just definition derivative. So as this goes to 0, it's a derivative. So we're left with f prime of x minus f prime of x. This is equals to 0. So uh, we just defined this, this uh, little thing here just because we wanted this to go to 0 as delta x goes to zero and that's basically what we got so this is what we defined it as so limit goes to zero yeah it's equal to zero so we have this little characteristic of this so now we're gonna write delta y in terms of of this epsilon so we're gonna get delta y is equal to well if we rearrange this one here so we'll just rearrange this so we arrange to solve for y. So this is going to be equal to well, f prime of x plus epsilon. This is going to be all times it by delta x. Yeah, we do, if we just solve for this one, move this over here, times everything by delta x. So this is what we have. Now we're going to use this to prove it. So we're going to use this little uh, this little uh, way of writing delta y to to prove or derive the chain rule, which we'll look at. So now let's say we have function now, we have y is equal to f of u, and u is equal to, well, g of x. 
if we write the corresponding increments of, let's say, delta y in terms of this way, so we're going to have delta y. This one is in terms of u, whereas it, for this case, this one here, y is just f of x. And you'd write delta x and whatnot. So now delta y, if we were to write in terms of u, this was going to be, well, delta delta u instead of delta x times the by f prime of u plus, we'll call this epsilon 1 because we're going to do this for delta y, u as well. Now delta u is just going to equal to, well, this one, now it's going to be, if you write the exact same things as x now instead of u. So now g, g of x plus epsilon 2. So now this one is written in terms of u. Put this inside here, because this is u, this is, put this inside this one, and then we'll write delta y. We'll, now, now we can write delta y as equal to delta x g prime of x plus epsilon 2 times it by f prime of u plus epsilon 1. And this one right here, yeah, this little thingy here, this is just you know, delta u, this whole thing. That's just what we put inside. So now if we re divide this both by x, delta x, so now these cancel, and if we take the limit, so basically we take the limit as delta x goes to 0 of this new thing here. This is basically now we have the derivative. This is just equal to, well, y prime of x. And this is going to be equal to limit delta x goes to 0 of this entire thing here. So now we're going to take the limit as all these goes approach to 0. But in, in terms of this and this, these aren't functions of delta x, so they're not affected. Not affected, these two. And but then this these two uh, epsilon two and epsilon one, they go to zero as delta x goes to zero. This is based on our definition that we sh that I showed above. So this is what we use for the proof. So then the limit these aren't affected. These are these go to zero. These go to zero, and then we're just left with f prime view g prime of x. So there's their proof. So we basically get y prime of x or is equal to basically. This one is just f prime of x. And this one's equal to g prime of x times f prime of u. This is actually our chain rule if we uh, rewrite it a bit better. So what we have here is basically we know that y is equal to f of u and u is equal to g of x. Or this could be if we just uh, plug it in we'll get y is equal to f of g of x here. So now what we have here is the, the derivative dy over dx is just going to be equal to g prime of x which can also be written as well g prime of x is just u prime is equal to g prime of x. So this is just be equal to u prime yeah or we'll just write this one first so we'll get yeah so we'll get u prime yeah, so we'll get d dy over dx is the slope equals u prime times, well, f of u, this one is just y prime in terms of u equals f of f of u. Then we'll just write this y prime in terms of u, or if we write it as an, all both these, so this one's in terms of x, in terms of u, so we'll just write it a bit nicer, d over dx is equal to dy over du, this is just this, times by du over dx, which is just, this one is just u prime. So basically this is our chain rule. This is our proof. This is in uh, Lebanese notation. So, yeah, so that's Lebanese notation. You could also write it as, uh, basically if you have y is equal to f of g of x, then the y prime is going to be equal to f prime of g of x times by g inside. So yeah, this is basically the the derivative of in terms of x and is, is equal to derivative in terms of u times u derivative of u in terms of x. 
So now if we get back to our uh, original example where we had y is equal to x squared plus 1 power of 100. To get this uh, derivative, well, we know that this is equal to also u to the 100, where u is equal to, well, x squared plus 1. We know that dy over du is equal to, well, this is just 100 u 99 using power rule. And u prime or du over dx is equal to 2x using power rule and addition rule. So now, y prime is just going to be equal to, well, this is dy over dx, is equal to dy over du times by du over dx. And this is just equal to 100 times u, 99 times by 2x, where u is just equal to x squared plus 1. This is 99 times 2x. So there, there we have it. So a little hint here is basically work from outside to inside. Yes, yeah, so we do derivative from outside to the inside. And then uh, another example, a quick one, I'll show you what, what I mean by that. Say y is equal to sine, of, let's say x5 plus x3, so something random. Then the derivative, we look at the outer function. The outer function is sine, this one's inside sine. And the derivative of, of sine is just cosine. So it's going to be cosine x5 plus x3, we just write it exactly what that is, u, or what, whatever this function is inside, and then times by the inside. So we do outside and then inside. The derivative inside, we just all times it. This is 5x4 plus 3x squared. Using power and, and addition rules for derivatives. So there's our proof. So you know, it's really quick. Uh, you'll learn, Once you get a hang of it, just memorize it. It's really easy to use and really quick and extremely powerful for everything for der getting derivatives of many different functions. Well, this is all for today. Hopefully you learned. Uh, it's basically dy. Yes, yeah, so basically that's a slope. I mean, that's the derivative. dy over dx equals dy du times du over dx. Well, this is all for today. Hopefully you learned. And um, stay tuned for another math easy solution.